Does it work? Yes, and what you can hear is the people clapping. Uh, and Hi. Francisca, we're so honored. We're so honored to have you. Uh, we all appreciate your courage, your dedication. Uh, especially we as Palestinians, uh, in times when not many people are speaking with conviction, and in times when diplomacy has become an art, where we no longer speak truth. Uh, we're grateful for all your work. And so, uh, can you give us first a, a quick update about the situation? What is happening in Gaza? Uh, what are you hearing from the ground? Yes. First of all, Raren, it's me thanking you, thanking you and uh, all your guests and uh, uh, for having me with you. It's a pleasure. I'm sorry for the unusual uh, setting, but I'm really literally sitting in the middle of the streets uh, in between meetings. And I didn't want to miss the opportunity to talk to you. And I often, always, always tell the Palestinians, if there is one people or one person who doesn't have to thank me, it's the Palestinian, because it's, it's me and it's us, the particular people in the West who should apologize to you for not being able to protect you before and now even more. So the situation in Gaza, it's a catastrophe. It's a catastrophe. Look, I mean, I, I, I understand that many people might not see. People tend to not believe what they do not see. They need to wait until they see to believe. And there is so much of humanity that gets lost. Get, gets lost. But even, I wonder, what happened to us? When we, when we hear 35,000 35, people killed in seven months, 15,000 people killed in seven months, but aren't, I mean, how did we lose our mind? Aren't we really, have we lost not all of our, our humanity? How can we live with it? And so, I mean, you, Gaza is, Gaza is, uh, is a cemetery where 35, the, the bodies of 35,000 people lie bare. I mean, sometimes in mass graves, sometimes in, uh, I mean, under the rubble, sometimes still in their homes, rotting. This is the reality in Gaza. Gaza has been destroyed. There has been a genocide. It has already happened. While we keep on talking and causing, a genocide has already happened. And you will remember this world, sorry, these words. So the, 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 there are no more hospitals functioning, four hospitals, and they are completely depleted. No more arable land, no more greenhouses, no more boats, no more universities, 300 educational schools destroyed, 80% of the homes destroyed, no electricity, no roads, no future. This is the thing, the core of the genocide. Remember, remember, genocide is defined by international law. It's not defined by personal opinions or personal history, no matter how painful it is. And we could, I mean, we codify the genocide convention in order to, in order not to have her to, in order not to see yet another genocide. And still, it happened. It happened to the people in Rwanda. It happened to the people in Bosnia. This is something I say, especially, especially to those from the West in your constituency. We are unable to prevent atrocity crimes, but even now that have been committed, and often in our name, often in our name. And in, name, in the name of religion, they're using religion to justify this monstrosity. And often with our money and with our political support from the West, particularly the US and some European countries, but no one is innocent when it comes to Gaza. So this is the reality. Now we need, when the, when the dust settles, you, you will see that whatever I've said, it's nothing, nothing compared to what has happened. Yeah, uh, Francisca, we watch from distance. We're here in Bethlehem. Many watch from around the world. We, we feel helpless. I mean, what can we do? Uh, especially yeah, as I people don't... of faith in churches, what can we do? What, what do you think? Yeah, look, for you and Pal in the rest of, for all the Palestinians, I understand you feel helpless, but in a way, we have made you helpless because it's not that the situation in the, in the West Bank and Jerusalem is much better. 
people need to understand people need to understand that israel's design as and desire has always been to get the land without the people this is the essence of genocide because it, it, it aims at the destruction of the people so we should have learned it before but now it has happened properly now people of faith first of all this is a test for humanity if you ha if you are people of faith you need to take a stand more than anyone else because you also lead by example if you are not able to sacrifice a little bit of your privilege today and I'm sorry to sound judgmental but this is something i tell everyone i meet because sacrificing a little bit of our privilege today is just to make sure that these other people won't lose everything including their life because this is what's happening and when i think that there are people of faith people of faith in the us for example and not only in the us sorry sorry there is an ambulance what is it no go ahead it's okay supporting this when i see that there are evangelical christians who are supporting israel because of their i don't, I don't know i'm not a person of faith so i should i should, sorry but i'm someone who who has who has absorbed the the, the teachings of jesus christ because this is the the family I grew up in, within. And at the same time, I mean, I say, how can this be done in the name of religion? This is not religion. This is not faith. If you do not stand on the side of the Palestinians and the few Israelis who stand for the recognition of equality and freedom and human rights of the Palestinian, yours is not faith. It's an ideology. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure you can hear people clapping, and thank you. Uh, and maybe you could give us some light. Uh, we heard yesterday some countries recognized Palestine as a state. Do you think this is a sign of hope? Do you think things are changing? Uh, is this where we find hope, or do we find it in the no. street, uh, in universities, uh, even in grassroots movements? Uh, any comment about the, the decision yes. to recognize Palestine? Yes, no and yes, in the sense no, no, this is a sign, this is a sign that Western countries feel guilty. Mm. When they start to recognize this big political move to recognize the state that doesn't even exist anymore other than on paper, that has become a collection of municipalities. This is the, a collection of the, like the Vatican states, but multiplied by cities. Today, the Israeli government has announced the annexation of South Hebron Hills that has been prepared. I've seen it happen over 20 years from afar little by little, military order after military order, and even the, the Israeli Supreme Court uh, legalized the takeover of, uh, of South Hebron Hills area. This is, this, is the, this is the Israeli government. This is what have allowed Israel to become. And so recognizing today the state of Palestine, I mean, it's a symbolic act, but is it the best thing that member states can do in the time of genocide? When 35,000 people have been killed in Gaza and 500 people have been killed in the West Bank, this is the best thing we can think of. Excuse me, it makes no sense. It just shows how the kind of hypocrites we have become. So what gives me hope today? There are a few things. Okay, where shall I start? No, first of all, first of all, and I'm not saying that because I'm talking, I don't even know how many Palestinians are in the room, but I, I, I yeah, the Palestinians give me hope. There are many, yeah. There are many. I mean, because they're, they still have such a strength that I don't even know where they find it. It's such kindness. I mean, Chris, there is a journalist who, uh, Chris Haynes, who used to say, and I fully subscribe it, he said once, the Palestinians have taught me the miracle of kindness. And this is why I think this, piece, this, this particular people is so special. Not so because of what he has, it has endured and many things, but also there are Israelis, very little, who have, I mean, they, they got this awakening they saw and they cannot unsee it anymore. And for me, this is the hope, the first source of hope. The second hope, South Africa. 
oh my god what we have seen south africa doing south africa alone alone because even other african countries excuse me everyone has forgotten the palestine not south africa south africa held the promise of nelson mandela and Desmond Tutu, and they are not giving it up. They went and they knew that they would face the rage of so many countries, and they said, no, we will not leave the Palestinians alone. You know, even if, even if we know that we are facing a giant, because this boils down to white supremacism. Look at the votes in the General Assembly for the recognition of Palestine. It's Europe, the United States, and Canada and New Zealand and Australia. Settler colonialism, the settler colonial club. This is why I tell people in the global south you need to get united because this again I'm a Westerner myself, but so proud of my values and my principles. And this is why, because we have been we have been we have been taught the the lesson of the Holocaust, but which is something so ingrained in me. That this is why a naturally fight injustice. If, if I'm a fighter, it also comes from that. And also, but we were not taught the lesson of, the, of colonialism. This is where we have let colonial amnesia and really and, and envelop our life. And now this is the third source of hope. The youth. The youth. Mm. Oh my God, what they're doing. And again, I'm so proud that these are youth from the global north. Because I've, never, I've, been, I've lived in, Arab, in the Arab region and in, let's say in the global south for 20 years of my life now and 13 years in Arab countries and I've never heard so much support, so much proximity with people in the global north as it is now. And because there are this, the, the young people here and also the older people connect with these young people. We, I mean, in Tunisia, in Jordan, in Lebanon, in Palestine, they, or in other places in the world, they see these young kids being beaten. I mean, protest, the crackdown on protests in the United States and in Europe, it's pathetic. What authority we will have to go to other places, being Egypt or Iran, and say, this is not, this is not fair. We have lost our moral authority, but because we had lost our moral compass a long time ago. So these are the three things that give me hope. Francesca, I really can't thank you enough. And I know you are in between meetings and I don't want to thank to take more of your time. Uh, thank you for inspiring us. And I know you don't want us to thank you, but we want to thank you uh, for leading with courage uh, and integrity. Um, and uh, thank you for joining uh, our conference, our initiative. Uh, this war has, this war of genocide has uh, really taught me the meaning of solidarity and uh, costly solidarity and uh, we gain so many comrades around the world people who share in the same struggle and yeah. uh, i'm grateful for uh, if anything you know everything looks uh, dark in this war but at least some signs of hope is these networks that we have created uh, throughout this world and uh, again thank you uh, Thank and you so thank much. you from just from me, from all of us uh, in the conference. Have a good day and good meetings, Francesca. Thank you. You too. Stay strong, people of faith. Bye. Bye.